What is going on YouTube? This is Acid Roots. Now I'm going to review the sixth album by rapper Young GZ. Basically, this project is called TM103 Hustler's Ambition, and it came out, and it came out in the late fall of 2011. Now the thing about this particular project is GZ took a pretty big break between this album and the recession from the fall of 2008, as far as that bitch can have him lifted. This was an album that he dropped a number of mixtapes in 2009 and 2010, as far as that bitch can happen. Originally, this album was supposed to come out in 2010. It got delayed a number of times. Just there were a series of promotional singles that GZ dropped off this particular album to help promote this album. It was just kind of the concept that all, not all of them, not all of them showed up on the particular album, and some of them showed up on the deluxe edition. But I would definitely have to highly recommend getting the deluxe edition because this album is a classic. Here, the, the surprising thing about it is this is like the fourth classic album that GZ has dropped here. I would have to say at least to the ones I've messed with as far as that pitch is going to happen. I definitely feel like he's had a string of these. Thug Motivation 101 was a classic. The inspiration was pretty damn near a classic. The recession was a classic, and this one's a classic. The thing about this particular project is it's just kind of, it's not necessarily more of the same, but it's just surprising. I was not expecting to give this album a 10 out of 10, just because I remember that GZ kind of charted during this album's run as far as that pitch can happen, but not nearly as big as he did in 2008 and 2006, especially, but not nearly as big as he did in 2008 and 2006, especially. So I would have to say in particular, it was just surprising that this was such a concentrated type album and did so well just with the appeal of it. I wasn't expecting to give this album, I mean, I would have thought like an 8 or a 9 or something, but the fact is it's going to get a higher score than that. You'll see what... I mean, I think the cat's out of the bag to score. I'm going to give this particular album, but just being able to say it is a classic here, just to be able to say that. So just the concept of this particular album is just the fact that some things were kind of happening in 2011. The shit, the shout, and the sounds of Atlanta rap and things like that were kind of shifting around that time in 2011. Folks like YC and Future and 2 Chain, some of those type of folks were starting to blow up on like the mixtape scene, some of that type of stuff as far as that pitch can happen. Gucci Mane and Slim Duncan and Waka Flocka Flame, some of those type of folks, just a number of folks that kind of had that relative pitch. It was just some interesting concepts that kind of went around. 2011 was a pretty big year for mixtape rap as far as that pitch can happen. Jeezy was a part of that particular scene. He dropped a series of mixtapes, 2009, 10, 11, some of those type of pitches. It's kind of the concept that this, the sound shifted and Jeezy was not in like the front runner of like rap music like he was in 2006 or even 2008. It wasn't. The big three was not T.I., Lil Wayne, and Jeezy like it was in 2006, 2007, 2008, some of those type of pitches. The, the tides had started to shift there just for some new sounds. Like Future was one of the bigger rappers out of 2011. Two Chance was definitely pretty big around that time. Gucci Mane was doing real well around that particular time. So there just were some tides that were kind of shifting as far as that particular kind of went. But despite all that, Gucci, or despite all that, Jeezy handled these tides shifting pretty well. I'd have to say it's a good concept. Just the fact that he juggled like the new sounds that were kind of going along. Even despite the fact that he may not have been as dominant, I, I feel like this is a this is kind of what happened with Lil Wayne with the Carter Four, where I feel like that album was kind of a classic as well. I'd have to say, but this didn't have Lil Wayne in like the full blown spotlight. Now Lil Wayne still did sell. Now Lil Wayne still did sell like a million in the first week on the Carter Four, damn near. But it's just kind of the concept that just in terms of the hits, that this was it kind of felt like Drake and Nicki Minaj were the bigger folks around that particular time in 2011. It's just kind of concept that he was kind of starting to take like a mild backseat. And that's kind of what Jeezy does on this particular album. Not to say in terms of ferocity and overall tenacity, of like the album's energy and stuff like that, and the quality, but just in terms of like the highlight of just saying that you're gonna. This like folks just in gossip and things like that saying that GZ was the biggest thing around. He was, was kind of felt almost mildly secondary as far as that pitch can happen. But there's some themes on here, some new producers. Like there's a cat on here named Lil Lodi who is also a part of It's the World from 2012. He's a new producer that's on here like six, seven, eight times, something like that out of 18 songs. Good pitch. Mike Will Mike Will made it on here. There is a Drummer Boy beat on here, but it's only once. Like Drummer Boy was more affiliated with like the recession. So there is like a small taste of the recession on this particular album, but it just amalgamates some new things. This kind of has a lot more ratchet type music, or at least the early formats. Just kinda just kind of a blend of like the recession and future, I would kind of feel like. That's kind of the concept of what I gathered from this particular album is it had this album is not quite as full-blown ratchet as much as like It's the World kind of was from 2012. That one's a little bit more 2 chains oriented, but this was kind of interesting, Jeezy finding his sound. It was just kind of interesting, Jeezy finding his sound in mid-late 2011 as far as that pitch can happen, just because it feels like a fusion of like Future's kind of formation, a trap with like the recession type sound, just in a kind of more darker oriented and just kind of more haunting aspect. So it's just kind of, you like like the drug addled type stuff of Future's Pluto and some stuff like that from like early 2012 and late 2011 as far as that pitch have a futures mixtape grind this definitely has some of that format just a little bit more and like the leery type feel of like the leeriness of like the recession type first was that pitch counts but some great stuff i mean this is a swirling dark album i definitely appreciate this one surrounded excellently produced is plenty 
Tour de Force and some of that type of stuff. So it's just an interesting concept that GZ managed to eke out like a fourth classic as far as that particular pitch can happen. It's another good highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend the singles on here. Basically, I recommend all five of the singles. There was a good amount of promotion on this particular album. So GZ was pretty large around this particular time. But there were five singles I recommend, all five. And then I'll talk about the songs after that that I recommend. So basically, the first single was Lose My Mind. This is a pretty nice one. This is like a sparkly kind of nightclub dynamite of a song. I'd have to say this has a catchy hook and exhilarating feeling. I would have to say in particular, and this is just a real good Friday night boiler. I'd have to say supplies is on this particular song. Pretty highlight type one. Definitely pretty exhilarating type energy just to kind of have on here. This should definitely get you excited pretty easily to some stuff like that. This one kind of, this one doesn't quite feel similar to like future sound as far as that pitch can happen. Just because this was a song that was made in 2010 as as far as that pitch can happen before like future completely blew up in like 2011 some of those type pitches this is one i mean the promotion cycle for this album was pretty large gz had been gz had been working on this album for a while so it's the concept about it. but this is on the deluxe edition so you won't find this on the standard edition but i do highly recommend getting the deluxe edition both versions of this album are going to get 10 i would say on the standard edition i liked every song on there there's only one song out of the 18 songs out of uh, there's only one song out of the 18 songs, including on the deluxe version, that I didn't enjoy in some format. So I should definitely tell you something. But that's just kind of the concept about it. So, but Ballin' is the second single. It's another highlighted one. This is definitely like a haunting kind of drill rap hitter of a song. I'd have to say in particular, pretty nice one for that. It's like an early 2010s kind of trendiness that this song particularly kind of has. It's just like a skittery kind of nightclub craze of a song. I would definitely feel like, and this is a great turn. And this song is just a great turn up kind of standout, I'd have to say. So it's a pretty good pitch. Lil Wayne is on the song. He definitely was eviscerating songs around that particular time. He does a pretty great job with that. Just a good concept. Just a real good. Whereas Lose My Mind was a little bit more of like a sparkly type one, a little bit more gleaming type one. This one's a little bit more drill type sound that like Rick Ross was doing in 2010. This is one that came out in early 2011. So this is around the time when Rick Ross was dropping Tupac back and some of that type of stuff. So it's pretty good for that drill type sense. Feels like a Lex Luger beat, but it is. And it's just kind of the concept, something of that relative pitch was a pretty good concept for that. Once again, this is another highlight off the deluxe edition. So that's two singles that are on the deluxe. I do recommend both those just to kind of get that. And the third single is Fame, and this has T.I. on there. This is a pretty good highlighted one also. This is like a gravelly kind of trap pop tune, I would have to say. It's pretty similar to like B.O.B.'s Airplanes, I would definitely feel like. And this is just a good commercial template that this song particularly kind of has. And this is just some dark kind of evening makeshift, I would have to say. So it's a pretty dope concept get this particular song. Definitely appreciate this one. This is just kind of, this feels like a Jim Johnson type beat. I mean, it is. I think it was produced by Justice League, but it's just kind of the concept of just getting just interesting Jeezy kind of amalgamating like some trap pop this feels like it could have fame feels like it could have been ripped out of the recession days just minus the fact that B.O.B.'s airplanes came out after that but it's just the concept of getting like something within a pop rap type approach or a trap pop I feel like it's just interesting that Jeezy kind of did trap pop because it's a good concept to get something that's trap but also commercial enough to kind of have that appeal of crossing over to something like that future later did that in 2012 but it's just a good concept to get something so I definitely feel like the recession from 2000 because I definitely feel like the recession from 2008 needed a song like this. It's too bad that this song didn't chart better because this is a pretty nice one. T.I. works pretty great on this song too. So Jeezy was really, Jeezy really had some excellent songwriting on this particular album. It's interesting that he got to the fifth single because the last time he did that was in 2005 with like uh, with, with Thug Motivation 101, I'd have to say. I Do is the fourth single. This has Jay-Z and Andre 3000 on this. It's a pretty highlighted one. It's like a vintage kind of Don Cannon-like mixtape Jay-Z of a song, I'd have to say in particular. This reminds me of 2000s Trap, I would have to say in particular. Pretty great concept for that. This is just kind of a retro nightclub outing pizzazz of a song, I'd have to say. And this is just an overall pretty solid song. So apparently this was originally like an Andre 3000 song. He was going to use it for like his solo album that just never came out. But just the concept of it is works as a pretty good Definitely reminds me of like some mixtape type fair. It just feels like the can't ban the snowman days from GZ or trap or die type days from GZ as far as that pitch can happen with it. Some great stuff there to kind of get. Very retro type tune. It's kind of a good reminder of what Jeezy was up to just around that time back in the mid 2000s as far as that pitch can happen. It's just, I mean, it's a recent one. It's kind of, if you were possibly a little bit younger for like the 2000s Jeezy as far as that mixtape type era and the DJ drama and Don Cannon type days, this is kind of a more recent one in like the early 2010s that has that retro kind of pitch for him as far as that pitch kind of happens but it's just a good highlight definitely appreciate this one this very throwback type song that works pretty well leave you alone is a great single this is the fifth single this this is a definite highlighted one it's like a glistening kind of night out flash of a song i had to say in particular this has a fantastic neo hook on here i 
This song has a fantastic neo hook on there. I'd have to say this song has some good swagger and refined outing fun. This song has some good swagger and it's some refined outing fun. I'd have to say about it in particular. So this really has like a swirling type beat. Just really appreciate this one. This is probably one of the album's best beats in terms of like commercial. This is probably one of the album's best beats in terms of like commercial flash and just overall like pizzazz. Just about this within that aspect. It's a real synthy type one that works pretty heavily. It's a real good night out type one just for that commercial type of feel. This one's not as much trap oriented, but it works pretty well for that sort of appeal. Real nice. Real Real nice ladies tunes for us that pitch can happen so it's a real trendy type one that's kind of the concept about it so talk about some of these on here yeah basically like i was saying out of 18 songs on this particular album there's only one song i don't recommend and that would just be it's on the deluxe edition but it doesn't matter much because the other three songs i recommend quite heavily on the deluxe and the only song i don't recommend out of the whole album is just never be the same so never be the same it's just kind of a limp kind of half-baked kind of beat on here that one just didn't add up to much it's pretty much like the only dud on this particular album it's the only real one that i didn't vibe with in some sort of connection towards i would have to say in particular but i basically recommend the whole album so yeah this album's going to get a 10 out of 10 just to basically say that it's just a real inspired kind of cheesy that just works pretty well so it had to say in particular it's just got a ton of stuff to say and praise about as far as that pitch kind of happens so i'm going to go ahead and recommend some of these songs so oj is a pretty nice one this has fabulous and jadakiss on there it's a pretty good pitch for that it's like a swirling kind of dark tempest of a tune i would feel like this this has a great hypnotic kind of like this is a great hypnotic nightlife highlight i would have to say in particular and this is one of the album's best beats in particular i would have to suppose pretty well about that and this song is just one that snarls so it definitely has some great lyricism on here it's a pretty nice one i like that jeezy keeps up with for i like that jeezy keeps up with jadakiss and fabulous as far as that pitch kind of has with it just as far as that kind of goes this is just an overall highlight one definitely need more songs like this before i think if there had been a song like this on the recession this would have been a pretty nice one not to complain about the recession that's a classic album but just to be able to say this is a good variation i like that gz basically he basically adapts to some of the trends of like the early 2010s but he tries some new tricks on here as well it's just some good concepts to get some of these just to kind of be able to say that it's a good pitch of that super freak is a pretty highlighted type one this has two chains on there this is definitely a classic type two and i would have to say this is like a revved up kind of nightclub gem i would have to say in particular this song should get you pumped pretty well overall i'd have to say this is just like a thrilling kind of shot in the arm. I would definitely feel like and this is just a good, and this is just good for a crazy outing kind of time. So it's definitely easy kind of outing type fair. And just stepping out, kind of having some exhilarating type times as far as that pitch kind of happens. So just, just some great stuff. This song feels like some mixtape two chains. I would have to say in particular, it's just him back on his 2011 type vibes as far as that pitch kind of happens. So it's two chains, just kind of, it's two chains with some of that lyricism and punchlines that he kind of has just within that pitch. Some good stuff. A real surprising highlight on here is Higher Learning. This is definitely a terrific type song. This is like a terrific smokage cut, I would have to say in particular. This chorus just gleams. This is just a beautiful chorus on this particular song. The cat who did this hook is really excellent on this particular song. It's a great one. This is just kind of an in-between, take a load off kind of smoke tune, I would have to say in particular. And this is just a great unwind kind of gem, I would feel like. So just kind of in particular about this one, it's just a great, it's an easygoing kind of smokage type one. It's a little bit different from typical kind of smokage type fare. Just not one that feels, this is not one that really feels rugged and stuff like that. Not necessarily one that's just kind of, you know, just like edgy and stuff like that. This really kind of feels lackadaisical and just a little bit more, just a little bit more here and there, just kind of more refined residential, some of those type pitches as far as that particularly kind of goes along with it, but it's a pretty excellent one. Trapped is a pretty highlighted one, definitely like this one. This one this one is pretty, Trapped is the same type of pitch as Fame is, so if you like that particular song, Fame, just minus the fact Trapped isn't like, Trapped isn't like B.O.B.'s Airplanes, but it is same that, that same kind of work shift type haze, so this is like a dreary kind of evening malaise of a song I'd have to say in particular. This is similar to Done It by Jeezy off the recession, I would have to say a pretty good concept for that. Is just some anguish kind of work shift, I would have to say. It's just kind of some anguish work shift commute, I would have to say. And it's just a pretty stellar song. So I definitely appreciate this one. This in particular is a real highlight to one. It's just interesting to get some of these work shift type tunes on here. I do feel like some of the previous albums didn't have as much work shift as far as that pitch can have. Maybe like Circulate or some of those type ones off the recession. But once again, it's interesting that GC had some new angles to try out and they worked. It's just some pretty good concepts for that. So it's a nice one. 38 is a pretty nice one this this is on the deluxe edition it's like a ramped up kind of more rugged hardcore trap type tune i would have to say that pretty good for that in particular it's like a good night out kind of city hopping traverse kind of this is a good night out and city hopping kind of traverse song i'd have to say in particular and this is just a good song to smoke a sweet too i feel like this is kind of a more this would definitely be a more residential type fair just within that pitch of kind of smoke it's just things like that just walking up the block some of those type pitches just in the neighborhood just getting snackage some of those type pitches just smoke a few just that sort of pitch just within the concept but it is kind of a more hardcore type it is kind of a more hardcore type trap too and i would have to say it's not quite as recreational but i would just listen to it just within a smoke session and just getting snackage some of those type pitches just some of those type 
atmospheres. But it does have Freddie Gibbs on there, who was kind of an affiliate of Jeezy for a good while, as far as that pitch can have just some good concepts. But this is kind of a more hardcore type trap tune just within that pitch. So that's the concept. But all we do is a pretty highlighted one. Definitely appreciate this one. This like a woozy kind of ladies trap tune. I would have to say in particular, it's like a leery kind of sluggish. And this song has some leery kind of sluggishness and like a softer approach. I would have to say in particular, this is just a good, this song is just a good residential traverse bop, I would have to say. So definitely a good residential hangout type tune for ladies as far as that pitch can happen. It's just a lackadaisical type one. This is another type of one that I would have liked to have seen on the recession. This is another type of one that probably should have been on the recession as well as far as that pitch can have. But definitely it's just a good concept just to get both of these particular the recession's a classic this one the recession's a classic this one is as well as far as that pitch can have it's just some good kind of just a good kind of woozy type one just a haunting kind of pitch just within that relative atmosphere just kind of smoke one with some chicas as far as that pitch can have it's just some good stuff there way too gone's a pretty highlighted type one way too gone's a nice one it's like a good future slash cheesy kind of fusion of a song i'd have to say it's like a taste of new age kind of 2010s trap that was kind of happening around that time in late 2011 mid 2011 as far as that pitch can have and the stuff that was going on with the Lana mixtape some of that type pitch is this kind of a druggy slash the song is just kind of a druggy but also haunting nightclub type hit i would have to say so future works on this song pretty well as does Jeezy. it's just a good concept of kind of getting a little bit of both like those styles that were going on or in a little bit of both those styles that were going on around mid late 2011 and early 2012 as far as that pitch can happen this works pretty well within that this is kind of one of those songs where Jeezy kind of realized way too gone was one of those songs where it was easier to notice that the sounds were shifting as far as that kind of pitch was happening on the like the rap scene as far as that pitch kind of went with like to atlanta type sound as far as that kind of went but this is kind of the concepts i like that one what i do is a pretty highlight type one also it's like a boy what i do just like that's a pretty good one also this is like a boiling kind of trap cut i would have to say this like vintage Jeezy. this song's like vintage Jeezy feels i would have to say in particular this this has like a haunting kind of this song has like a haunting drummer boy beat i would have to say it's a good smoke a few type tune i would definitely feel like for some social times i would have to say this is a good smoke a few cut for like a social time i would have to say in particular so that's a nice one this really feels like some recession type fair I do feel like there were mild traces of like the evolution of what re I feel like songs like what I do were like mild traces of like the recession type fields as far as that pitch can have with it. This is definitely an evolution of that particular album. It's just kind of the concept of, of it being like a fusion of recession and like some newer sounds, but it works pretty well just within that concept. But this is definitely like a retro type one. Just being able to say some of that. <clears throat> Waiting is another highlighted type one. This is like a good, this is like a great morose and kind of leery intro. I would have to say in particular, this just reminds of like the reset. This song just reminds of like the recession's gloom. I would have to say in particular, this is just like some vintage Jeezy. I would definitely feel like and this is just a captivating and kind of sweeping type song to kind of get in particular. Really appreciate this one. Just a great intro to kind of kick things off. Pretty similar to like hypnotize off the, the pretty sweeping type one, like hypnotize off the inspiration as far as that pitch kind of kicked off that particular album. So it's a good concept to kind of get that one. This this one's for you is a pretty biting type song definitely like this one this says trick daddy on there as well this is like a scathing kind of real talk it's like a scathing kind of real talk highlight i would have to say in particular pretty nice one this is definitely like a menacing kind of beat i would definitely feel like this this has an emphatic feeling overall i'd have to say and this is just has the song has an emphatic feeling and hitting lyrics i would have to say in particular and this is just a pretty dope song so i definitely appreciate this one right down to the production right down to the lyrics on this particular song it's just a pounding type one this real biting type song real scathing this stuff like that this really works pretty effectually Jeezy really snarls on this particular song and Trick Daddy has like a real verse on here in particular so it's just some excellent stuff to kind of get this one definitely could have used another song like this just in terms of the bitiness of this particular album and then Nothing's a pretty highlighted type one this is like a jazzy kind of mid-paced vanilla club times of a song I'd have to say in particular this is like a basic the song is like a basic bop for some good jive and glamour I'd have to say in particular on this, this song and this song definitely gets things started well I'd have to say in particular so it's a pretty tight so it's definitely a pretty glitzy type one just to kind of get I definitely feel like nothing and everything has some pretty similar type productions. They're both pretty haunting type ones, just within a more ritzy, just within a more vanilla club type sense as far as that pitch can have. Just some standard bops for just some outing type fare just within that relative pitch. Just some good ones to kind of get just for like that outing kind of pitch, just for a standard night out, regular kind of evening as far as that kind of goes. And then everything's another highlight type one. It's like another, this song would be another vanilla nightclub pounder in particular. I'd have to say about this one. This is like a good companion with nothing, like I was saying, good pitch for that as far as that kind of goes. And this is just like some night out bravado i'd have to say and this is a pretty thrilling song so it's a pretty nice one within that pitch definitely appreciated some of these just kind of the concept 
this kind of the concept. I feel like songs like Super Freak, Nothing, Everything. I feel like songs like Super Freak, Nothing, and Everything are some good ones just for like some vanilla night to as far as that picture has. But this album is pretty chock full of just like outing type fair, just with that same particular. This whole album is just chock full of that sort of night. And it's kind of chock full of that sort of appeal in particular, I'd have to say. So some great concepts there. So this album gets a 10 out of 10. The social score is going to get a 10 out of 10 also just because Jeezy was really inspired on here. He has some makeshift songs on here like Fame. He has some glimmering kind of makeshift songs on here like Fame and Trap, some of those type pitches he has some good night outing type songs with some flash like leave you alone that's a night outing flash like leave you alone lose my mind oj some of those type ones he has some exhilarating type ones like super freak on here waiting some of those type pitches some trendy type ones like way too gone like way too gone and there's another one on here that's kind of like that and ball in some of those type ones just in particular to kind of get some of those type pitches and even 38 is a pretty nice one within that relative pitch it's kind of some nightclub type appeal and it's kind of out and about i would have to say this one's for you is a pretty biting type one just some good pitches overall like that sort of pitch even some songs for ladies just within a trap type sense it's kind of some songs that probably kind of have that recession type fair like uh all we do some of those type pitches and then leave you alone an excellent song for ladies as far as that kind of goes along with it and then you have an excellent kind of smoking type song in higher learning beautiful chorus on that particular song there's some excellent type stuff on here just some good concepts so plenty of good pitches to talk about on this particular album this is a good swirl this overall stuff that works pretty well and this is a good amount of night flash and things like that just kind of get this within that sense plenty of good products to kind of have especially especially the deluxe edition that has the same particular so that's a good concept about that but in terms of future in terms of future like gz dropped a double album in november of 2023 so there is some more pitches to get to i'm definitely going to get to some more of these ones from like the mid i'm definitely going to get to some more of these ones from like the early 2010s that's kind of the pitch that i'm on from gz right now as far as that kind of goes along with it definitely want to get to like trap or die too some of those type ones as far as that pitch kind of goes along we'll just have to get to some more of these once again this is kind of like a left field kind of classic it's just kind of the concept that despite the fact that gz wasn't primarily in the spotlight he kind of pulled off like a classic album similar to what Lil Wayne did with the Carter 4 and just managed to do it. Just managed to do it. It was very inspired. Had plenty of good outing type flash on here. Stuff like that. Just plenty of pizzazz and just overall clever ideas and stuff. A lot of versatility and variety stuff though. A lot of good versatility and variety type stuff that pulled off the vibe extremely well I'd have to say. So I do highly recommend this album. This is another classic for Jeezy and it's one that you don't want to miss.